the land that we are meeting on. So we acknowledge the land we're meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Um, so with that, I'd like to open our meeting welcome and thank you all for coming. Um, I'm just going to do some introductions of the Tenants First staff and the Tenants First Tenant Advisory Panel. Uh, so my name is Jen St. Louis and I am um, the manager of the Tenants First project. To my right here is Rima Patel, Biddy Livesey back there that I think you've all met. She's been walking around uh, chatting with everyone. Um, and we do have some members of our tenant advisory panel here, so if you want to stand up or give a wave uh, when I say your name or whatever. Uh, but we have Alan Dutton here. <laughs> Carlene Steer. Hi, you don't have to take my picture. <laughs> Nessa Babley and uh, John Corso. That's our, our team at the front. We have Doris Power over uh, to my left. Um, and we have Augustine Monroe, so I can't see you, there you are. And did anyone else come in? I think we're okay, we're expecting a few more, but uh, they may join us later. Um, just some kind of technical information, food's at the back, um, washrooms are at the, at the kind of midway door down the hallway. Uh, and um, we're gonna start the presentation. So I'm gonna pass it off to Rima to do a bit of a recap. Um, and we'll be kind of moving around. The tenant advisory panel is doing some of the presentation, and the staff will do some as well. Thank you, Jen. Um, so as Jen said, we're going to start off with a bit of an overview of Tenants First and just sort of get a sense of what we've done, where we are, and what's up next. All right, so on this slide you can see, and I, I hope you can see it, if you don't, I will explain it as clearly as possible. Um, but what we have in this visual are tenants' first goals from our 2016 report, from the Mayor's Task Force report. And then corresponding to those goals, we've got a column that explains what's happened so far, what we've done so far. And then the third column uh, tells us what's coming next in the next couple years. So. Uh, I'll start on the top left over here, so with tenants first goals. So the first one is that TCHC focuses on being a social housing landlord. In terms of what we've done to that end so far, um, right now we have a review of TCHC's mandate underway. Uh, we also have been doing three pilot projects that have focused on decentralization of certain tenancy related services. Uh, a pilot on youth services, and a pilot on local action planning. Uh, we've also begun to transfer scattered houses to not-for-profit housing providers. Um, and then in terms of what's coming next, uh, City Council will make a decision about what services TCHC should deliver, and that's, that's kind of as a result of some of the mandate and pilot work that we've been doing to date. Um, for the next goal, uh, we have buildings being in a state of good repair. That was one of our main goals here. Um, in terms of what's happened so far is um, more money for capital repairs in 2018 and 2019. And in terms of what's coming up next is City Council will make a decision about how TCHC should be funded and to ensure that it's funded adequately for the services it provides and, and really for the buildings as well. Um, the third goal here is tenants being connected to appropriate services and being active participants in their communities. Uh, so in terms of what's happened so far, um, TCHC has uh, created their interim seniors housing unit. Um, we're working with the city and the Toronto Central Lynn on developing a new integrated uh, service model to deliver health and housing services in seniors, uh, the seniors buildings. Um, and more support in rooming houses. Uh, in terms of what's coming next, um, as I said, uh, related to the integrated service model, the city, TCHC, and the Toronto Central Lynn will be piloting the, the integrated service model, essentially, um, in, in, uh, starting in 2020. Okay. 
So with respect to this meeting, the purpose of the meeting uh, is to inform all of you about the recommended actions to be considered by Council um, in this report, and also to get initial feedback from tenants on upcoming work on a plan to reduce violence in TCHC communities. And this we're gonna be dealing with towards the end of this meeting. Uh, our agenda for today, so Jen uh, did some introductions. You've all been introduced to our wonderful tenant advisory panel. Um, we're also gonna have a presentation by uh, our tenant advisory panel, some members on our panel. Um, we will then have a presentation on the upcoming report and you can see that you've got summaries of the report in front of you. Uh, we will then break into a small group discussion on um, the plan to reduce violence in TCHC communities, and then we'll wrap up, and then we'll be done by eight o'clock-ish. Okay. So I'd like to call up Alan and John to come talk a little bit about the tenant advisory panel. task force panel was or mayor's task force was established to provide uh, advice and recommendations on transformative uh, developed uh, ideas from tenants lived experience in Toronto community housing the first tenant advisory <coughs> panel has been meeting since March of 2017 and members were chosen through an interview selection <coughs> process and from and we're all from very diverse backgrounds and neighborhoods. Since the <coughs> advisory panel started, we have focused on the seniors portfolio and scattered homes and the mandate of Toronto community housing. We've held information sessions across the city before each report and we've been involved in selecting 10 directors on the Toronto Community Housing Board. Since the tenant advisory panel started, we have heard from poverty, poverty reduction activists who came to speak to us, been involved in selecting a community organization to start a network for tenants of single family homes, heard from chosen community organization on how to on how they would support tenants to create a network so that tenants within the single family homes could communicate with each other. Thank you. Uh, now over to Jen. So this slide shows a visual that is in the report um, that really gives an overview of the current direction that we have from council, the current direction where we are moving to. Um, so up here, I guess, or I guess to start in the middle, we have the different parts of TCH's um, business and portfolio that we have been working on and meeting with TCH and others about. Um, to start at the top is the seniors portfolio. And what council has told us to do is to um, work on better strategic integration of the 83 seniors mandated buildings at TCH and the city. So when we talk about the recommendations in this report, uh, this report gives a recommendation about how to restructure ourselves on the city side to then be able to better integrate services with the TCH seniors buildings. In terms of the, and so we've kind of color coded them so you can see the blue and orange, that the delivery of that uh, will be a shared responsibility in the future. Um, and so we're working towards what that shared responsibility looks like. Uh, in the mixed portfolio, um, we have direction from Council to implement a revised tenant-focused service delivery model, improve the integration and accountability with the city, and have a strengthened system of uh, tenant engagement. So that's kind of what our goal is, and this report um, that, you, that we'll talk about tonight lays the roadmap for how those decisions will get made. 
In terms of the development function, through the city's real estate um, consolidation uh, program, the city will be looking at how TCH's development arm could be better integrated with a new city agency called CreateTO that is tasked with um, leveraging city building uh, opportunity. And so we want to bring TCH into that so that when TCH communities are revitalized, they're also, um, we're looking at other city building opportunities like adding in affordable housing and um, working closely between the city and TCH on how those plans get made. And with the scattered portfolio, the intent and the direction from council is to transfer that portfolio to the nonprofit sector. So this is kind of the current state where we're at. Um, the report before you was not a report that we had uh, wanted to write or had initiated writing. We did want to once we were given direction, but it wasn't on our schedule of reporting. We were asked to, um, to bring forward a report that had ideas about accelerating um, the work that we're doing. And so that's what this report is. This report gives a time frame to accelerate some of these decisions being before council and as well gives an update as to what, what the Tenants First uh, team has been doing uh, along with our partners, Tenants and TCH. Yeah, question? Yeah. Nowhere in any of this is it showing what the financial impact to doing this split, what's gonna be the actual cost? Maybe not for this year, but you have to have a multi-year plan because you're not gonna do this in one year. So I, I'm looking to find out, nowhere do I see numbers showing what the financial impact is to the city or to Toronto Community Housing to actually make this happen. Yeah, so that will come in the June report. So the June report, um, the, the, it, we'll go through the schedule of the various reports that will be coming. But that, as I said, this is an interim update report. <laughs> that puts forward a faster timeline. So that, that work has been question. done. I don't know what your question is, sorry. I, I wanna know, when are we gonna know? I, I wanna know what the financial impact is going to be, because if if we're gonna do this split, and, and it seems that it's inevitable, there's gonna be a cost to this. There's gonna be a dollar amount to this. So once council has to make a decision on what that looks like, what this strategic integration actually functionally looks like, there will be a financial impact. But that isn't this report. This report isn't presenting an actual plan um, and what the governance model will look like or anything else. This report is giving an update and committing to come back with hard recommendations. And you're talking about integration and where in there do, are you providing for accessibility to any of our seniors' buildings as part of the services required. Yeah, so the service, the integrated service model does contemplate uh, all, uh, all services to tenants, including accessibility. So that will be part of the integrated service model. Okay, where is the actual model? It's being developed right now. Where? So the, the plan, the report talks about the plan to pilot in 10 sites starting in January. How can you pilot something if you're not telling us what that model looks like? We don't, the model hasn't been fully created yet. So we gave an update. So this report is an update report. We would not have chosen to come to council with this report because you're right, it doesn't give any new information really. The only new information this provides is the updated schedule of when the, the decisions will be made by council. This report isn't intended to bring so this new information really about this. Anything. Well, it's telling you what the updated schedule for council's consideration of those decisions will be, and provides an update as to what's happened to date. <coughs> I do have a microphone. You do. Is there a speaker? Biddy's okay. gonna run around. I will run around. I've got Susan and then Steve. If members of the Senate Advisory Panel can also help me by signaling and okay. neglecting a corner of the room. Would it be helpful to go through the rest of the report? Or yes, yeah. please okay. do. Complete. So why don't we go through the proposed schedule and the recommendations, and then because uh, some of the questions I suspect will be answered through that. So, yes. Yeah. Questions at the end, please. Sorry, if you could take no questions before you do that, then. 
Sure. I'm just wondering Thank if, you for like, noticing. yeah. I did. I definitely noticed you. I just so think don't that. Don't take any questions. Okay. I will take no questions. Okay. So this is a report uh, schedule that is presented in the um, in the report. So these are our upcoming reports. These are decision points for council to make in this uh, calendar year. So in um, at the end of this month, there will be a report coming that uh, suggests a new approvals framework for TCHC revitalization projects. So this isn't really a tenants first report. It's it's um, it's a report we helped pull together uh, with our other city divisions. But right now, when TCH wants to revitalize a um, site, they need to get the city's permission to do so through shareholder and service manager consent. So this report outlines uh, that in a consistent way, but also adds a bit of a new step whereby this, uh, TCH will work with the city to see if there are city building opportunities, uh, and if there are opportunities for new affordable housing to be built in TC on TCHC site, uh, and we'll also evaluate what the co potential cost of that would be to the city. So we worked uh, closely with TCHC and with um, the city manager's office shelter support and housing and um, plan city planning to come up with a process that integrates all of those. So the big report, which I think is what kind of everybody is, is uh, looking for, um, and I'm sorry to disappoint in this report that we're currently presenting, uh, but there will be a report coming in uh, June. It's scheduled for June right now, which will make recommendations on the mandate, governance, and accountability for each of those parts of TCH that council has not actually made decisions. So that is when uh, there will be a recommendation about what the strategic integration of the city and uh, TCH services for seniors will be. That's the recommendation where the future of TCHC, the, the kind of uh, mixed uh, housing at TCHC, what the mandate, mandate governance and accountability for that part of the portfolio will be, and as well for the development portion. So these reports are being worked on by various um, people at TCHC and the city and uh, consulting on those. We're also bringing together all of the work that, uh, that we've done to date about what tenants uh, wanted to see in seniors buildings and what the high priority, priorities will, will be and working that into the mandate discussion. So this is where we talk about what TCHC will do and what TCHC won't do, what our city responsibilities and what our housing responsibilities. And then the final report that will be uh, in September, hopefully, to line up with the city's 2020 budget process will be the presentation of a permanent funding model. So council, right now we have an interim funding model. Council decided to fund TCH uh, in a certain way for a two year period to give staff time to develop a permanent funding model. And so it's a, mo a funding model that will consider both the capital and operational needs of TCHC. Um, and as well, at that time, we'll have the, um, the results of the scattered housing uh, request for proposals, and we'll be making some recommendations about which nonprofit or nonprofits will be operating those in the future. So the actual recommendations in the report, the first one is, um, is on the city side, so that the city designate the long-term care home and services division as the seniors housing and services entity that they approve. So what that means is we will be reconfiguring the long-term care division at the city to also include housing and services. And so this report is asking for the authority for council to give the deputy city manager the authority to create that division and also to, um, to you know, staff that, so to appoint an interim general manager and uh, get that rolling. So that on the city side is we, we had committed to doing that in 2020, but we are now um, pushing it to 2019 because council has asked us to move this process faster. The second recommendation is about the transfer of the uninhabitable houses. So last year, council gave us uh, the authority to transfer, the, transfer houses that were currently vacant to uh, nonprofit organizations. We're just having a bit of a challenge um, landing on a methodology to determine the pricing structure of that. So the decision was made to go to council with that uh, pricing structure to get that rolling. So we have a confidential attachment contained in the report that council will need to approve. 
recommendation number four um, is it's got a bunch of pieces and it's a lot of kind of um, cleanup around the rooming houses and uh, and uh, agency houses. So the first point is um, to invite the current uh, support provider in the rooming houses the opportunity to uh, put in a proposal to actually own and operate those houses. So we're building on the work that's being done already in the rooming houses and the support that's already being provided. Um, B there is an addition of some houses that were left off of the agency house list. So just due to an error, there were some houses that currently are actually occupied and being operated by agencies that weren't included in the original list that council had approved. Uh, again, this is C is a cleanup of the agency houses. Since we got the council authorization, there's been a turnover in agencies at two addresses. Uh, and the approval that we got was to offer the agency houses to the current operators, so we need to update that with the uh, agencies that are currently at those two addresses. Um, again, 502 Parliament, that's adding a house to the list of rooming houses approved because it was initially left off. And E is um, a recommendation regarding um, offering to transfer uninhabitable houses um, to organizations that currently run 24-hour drop-ins who have asked the city for access to more permanent space for their programs. The fifth recommendation is about a comprehensive violence reduction plan. Uh, so TCH um, staff went to their board and asked for um, a budget allocation to uh, create a, a violence reduction plan and a program. And um, some of their board members uh, wanted them to work a little more closely with the city on that plan to ensure that it, uh, it acknowledged a range of ways of dealing with violence. So that it would include uh, prevention and community programming and supports as well as enforcement with uh, the community safety unit. So this is asking uh, council to endorse that and to direct TCH to work with the city to not develop that plan on their own but to actually work with um, the city staff to do that. Okay, Biddy, now you're on to the okay. question. <laughs> Hello everyone, good evening. Uh, our focus today is to get feedback from you on resident safety and security. In your own opinion, what factors contribute to issues of disruption, violence, and antisocial behavior in communities? Second, what ideas do you have to improve safety in our community? What should safety staff know as they work with the TCHC on this issue?
And that was the tenant's first consultation at Metro Hall.